Check that out right there. Wow. On my walk. <laughs> A snake. Yeah, we're going to start off this morning my walk I seen a snake <laughs> yeah good morning everybody special intro I hope you're blessed welcome back to biblical truth central brother D going for his walk getting my cardio on and trying to stay healthy so I thought I would just talk about some current events in this video because I'm going to be walking a while and um, there's a lot of things in which I want to to put on display as far as topics but in this particular video I want to just talk about the things in which all of us are experiencing today um, you know as I walk through the neighborhood here I continuously hear in my head the word uh, social distancing. Now, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that all of you have heard that term as well. Keeping at least six feet away from people. You, when I go to the store, it's like a madhouse. Um, I feel like I am in a hospital when I go to the store because I see a lot of people with gloves. I see a lot of people with masses. I see a lot of people keeping their distance. And it's just not, the world's just not the same. People treat individuals like aliens. They look at you like you're crazy if you don't wear a mask. And how you doing? <laughs> I know, right? Have a good life, buddy. You, thank you, you too. All right. <sighs> nice guy, nice guy, full of joy. But you know, people don't 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 love on each other anymore. There's no love. You know, if you don't wear a mask, they consider you to be crazy. They consider you to be a threat if you don't wear a mask. And I'm telling you, sometime in the future, I can see them mandating individuals wearing masks to go into certain stores, to make purchases. We're getting really close to that B system, folks. Really close. And I just, it's really, it's just disheartening because People are scared to do simple things like shake your hand and give hugs. Stand closer than six feet. Like sitting at a coffee table at a cafe, conversating for hours. You're not further than six feet at a coffee table. Just having deep conversations. You know, we, we live in an age to where socializing, we've already lost a lot of those skills. Meaning people don't pick up the phone anymore and call you. You know, people don't meet up anymore hardly. You know, we're either texting, messaging on Messenger or Instagram, tweeting. We're doing video calls zooms um what's that facetime you know doing all of these alternative measures of communication and i said this a couple of years ago but i just feel like people have lost a sense of communication because of all of this these changes and now you're telling now they're telling us to stay away from each other Isolation, complete isolation, I feel is on the horizon. You know, the Bible says that it's not good for a man to be alone. You know, and 
he wasn't just talking about, you know, Adam being by himself, you know, with the animals and no one there to help him and keep him company. But he was talking about everybody. A lot of people, they commit uh, suicide with this, um, due to depression from being alone. I know people who are in a really, really long season of singleness and they feel like they don't have anybody to console them, to talk to, to vent, you know, which is why I always try to offer, you know, my ear to people who feel like they have something to say or they want to get something off their chest, maybe some counseling. I do that a lot, a whole lot. If you don't see me making videos, trust me, I'm doing work uh, behind the scenes helping people. But people, they just, they end up falling and succumbing to despair due to loneliness. And now here we are living in a, a time period where they're saying we don't want you around people, avoid people. Uh, you know, mixing that in with this social media age to where it is very deceptive when you look on social media because people can make you think that they're living their best life when in fact you're only seeing highlights of their life. Can you just imagine that? I was laying in the bed this morning when I woke up and, you know, I was thinking about social media and I viewed it as a window like you you know how you're at home and you you may see somebody outside barbecuing or grilling and playing around you're looking out the window seeing the world seeing what people are doing well since everybody can't leave home now the only window that we really have to observe anything is social media and some people are you know they're depending on where you live you know, you're allowed to leave home. Like I stay in the state of Florida. We, as you can see, <laughs> I, I'm outside. We're not mandated to stay home. Um, we have, the governor here has allowed the people of Florida to, to do certain things, go through certain cracks, we'll say, just to get out of the house. Grocery store, um, exercise activity the governor feels that that's important so we're allowed to go out and work out and that's what I'm doing right now I'm just walking my neighborhood and it allows me to get out but I know that there are states that don't allow people to leave their home you know for nothing so I, I know that those people have to be feeling pretty depressed right now I mean, can, nobody, nobody saw this coming, you know, staying home for a whole month. No one saw this coming. And then for you to see on social media, well, there are people who are outside and I can't go outside. I can't do these things. That can be pretty depressing and make a pe person feel lonely and, and down, you know? You know, when we started this year, 2020, in the beginning of the year, you know, I felt in my spirit that this was going to be a very eventful year. Felt that it was going to be a year of changes, going to be a year of adjustments, going to be a year of things just not being like the previous. And boy, not to boast, but it's right on the nail on the head. People didn't see this coming when we um, enter the new decade, 2020. You know, usually people are excited in the beginning of the year. They're amped up, they're motivated. They wanna do things that they didn't do the previous year. And here we are, three months into the year, and the world shockingly just shuts down. You can't go to work. You can't go to the gym to take care of your body. You can still exercise. You can't go 
to social gatherings, parties, restaurants, baseball games, basketball. They've canceled things. They've, they've taken away a whole lot of stuff that a lot of people were very, very dependent on. And glory be to God, I'm not really, I don't really care much for sports. You know, I don't. I just, I care about going to the gym because that's my job. And that's been taken away from me, but the Lord is good. And he has been watching my back in the back of my family. Um, but besides all of that, everything else doesn't really bother me. It's really bothering a lot of people, though, that they can't partake in the things that they are used to. Now, for some places, they're already opening up things. Again, I stay in the state of Florida. And um, Pensacola, to be exact. And we have the nation's most popular beaches right here in my city. People come from all over the country to come to our white sand, crystal clear beaches, which are very, very beautiful. And I probably should appreciate it more, but since I've lived here my whole life, it's kind of like, eh. But other people, they come here from everywhere. And we had a really, really big problem around spring break where people were coming. And after spring break was over, you know, the cases started climbing up. We're at about 420 confirmed cases here in my city, in my county. But, you know, I'm not afraid. You got some people out here that are scared. They're afraid of, of getting this virus. You know, the Bible says in the book of Joshua, you know, be not afraid, but be of good courage. You know, don't be dismayed. Don't be moved. You know, that's a commandment. You people out here don't think that the Lord meant what he said? Do you think that that was just a saying that he said? Well, that's one thing about God. God doesn't say things just to blow smoke. He doesn't say things just to say things. He says things to govern us in our thoughts so that, may, so that we may walk upright and not be considered unrighteous. God is good. He's not a liar. He's nothing but the truth. So we need to take what he says at heart and not be afraid and not be fearful, but also exercise caution. There's a difference, okay? But the, but the world that we live in in the state that it's in, you know, I've stated this on several videos that people are scared and they feel that there is no hope. Which brings me to the next point that I wanted to talk about in this video is the body of Christ. You know, I've been talking to several believers lately and we all feel the same way. We feel it in our spirit that God is assembling his church. Now, some of you may be like, well, the church has always been here. No, no, the church hasn't always been here. The church has failed us in a lot of ways. You know, the church has failed people numerous times. The church has not spoken on certain manners. The church has let things go through the cracks. The church has sat on the sidelines, you know? And now we're at a point where people, they got questions. But the body of Christ has not been answering those questions. The representatives that are in place you know, your Joel Osteen's, your Crefro Dollars, your Kenneth Copeland's, all of the people who push 
the charismatic doctrine, prosperity and all that good and all that stuff. And they're not talking about salvation. They're not talking about repentance. They're not talking about the true power of God. They're just talking about money 24-7. They're talking about naming and claiming. All that stuff is not, it's not beneficial at this point. And those pastors are quiet. Because they don't know the truth. They're quiet. But you got people out here, you know, like myself and many others who have no name in this world, meaning no reputation, which I really, I really don't care for too much. The Bible says that God is not a respecter of persons. He doesn't care about your social status. He just cares whether you are saved by the blood of his son and that you are walking in righteousness. That's all he cares about. Now, there are people out here who preach the gospel religiously, who preach the gospel consistently, who preach the gospel with passion but many are not hearing it because we don't have the, the mass, the mass attention. We don't have the audience. We don't have the platforms that they have. Though we do have YouTube and YouTube is a blessing because it can be utilized to spread the gospel. It can be utilized it can be used for good. It doesn't have to be used for vain. We can use this and spread the gospel. You really can. And I'm telling you that this is a season for Christians who say that they love the Lord, who say that they follow Jesus, and who say that they want to live for the Lord. And all that they do, this is the time for you to stand up. This is the time for the saints to rise up. This virus has taken out a whole lot of ministers, pastors. Now, some people may get a little offended with what I'm about to say. And it's just my opinion. It's just my opinion. And I know my opinion doesn't hold water to the word of God. But there's a lot of ministers and pastors who have been taken out due to this virus. And been taken out of position. And I don't know their hearts. I don't know where they stood with the Lord. I don't. Perhaps it was their time to go. I'm not sure. But at the alarming rate is, is more so what's concerning to me. That there, that there is no mistake that people are being replaced. They have to be replaced. Some of these churches that we go to have fallen idol, which means they're not moving. They're content with their doctrine. They're not trying to reach out, outreach. They, they're just not, not spirit filled. I don't want to sit up here sounding like an idiot. Well, when I say that there's a lot of dead churches out here, there's a lot of dead churches. You know, the church that I grew up in as a kid, the Baptist church that my great grandparents attended, I never felt like I was spiritually fed in that church. 
that church ended up losing over 90% of their members. Why would you, why do you think they would all just leave all of a sudden? Year after year, people left. In the 70s, that church was packed. In the 80s, that church was packed. The 90s, that church was packed. Going in in the 2000s, people started dropping off a little bit. A little bit after, a little bit after, a little bit. Sure enough, during that decade of the 2000s, going into 2010, people just stopped going. Started finding other places to worship. They just left. And that, uh, I don't even know, Reverend is the title that he utilized for whatever reason. He left. And the church was taken over by another a pastor. And the church literally had to be reformed and built back up from somebody else. You don't just leave a spirit-filled church where you are being fed and satisfied with what you're hearing. You don't leave. You only leave if you feel deprived and you feel that that pastor is not doing the will of God. And I feel in my heart, that's exactly what happened to that church. And that's what happened to a lot of churches. And that's what I mean about a dead church. And I'm pretty sure all of us can relate to that. I was talking to a young lady the other day. We were talking about doctrine. She grew up in the Jehovah's Witness household. And now she's grown and trying to find her own way. Searching the scriptures with her husband. And I just tried my best to shed some some light and help her because you know they refuse to go to church which me and her are probably gonna have to talk about eventually but she refused to go to church because she says that there's just too many false doctrines and the problem i have with that is that not every church preaches false doctrine and we can't use that as an excuse to not fellowship among one another book of Hebrews tells us to forsake not the assembling of each other don't do that don't try to walk this path alone I can tell you from experience that trying to do this by yourself with no accountability and no one to fellowship with and no mentorship can really really be hard it can be very hard you don't want to do this alone people you want help you want your spiritual family to be there. You have a lot of people who don't want to go to church because of false doctrines. And I wish I could say that that isn't true, but it is. The Lord is taking people out of positions that he gave them. And they fell out of the, the passion of spreading the gospel. The gospel message never gets old. It, it's constantly, it constantly needs to be given because everybody has not heard it. We have to can't, we gotta keep pushing it. We gotta keep pushing it. It is the most important message that every Christian can give. And in these days, the people who are going to be put in positions of sharing the gospel and preaching and teaching need to hold on to that truth. It's time to get up and, and to do something for the Lord. You know, I made a video a week ago talking about spiritual maturity. Go check it out. We cannot remain babes in Christ. 
when you first come to the Lord, yeah, you're you're a baby Christian and you get fed and you grow. You grow in godliness. You grow in strength. You grow in grace. You grow in wisdom and knowledge to the point where you can give it back to somebody who was in that position that you were in. That is the objective, is to recycle and to give it back. Amen? You cannot continue your life sipping on milk. You have to take on the meat so that you can grow strong to be teachers. Paul says that by now, you should be teachers. But your carnal mind has kept you a babe. Your focus is in too many places. Your desires are not pure. You want what you want for you and not for the Lord. But you say that you love God. And you say that you want to do for him. But your actions say otherwise. This is the time for us to stand up and to start preaching. Start opening your mouth. I'm seeing it. I am seeing it happen. I'm seeing people on YouTube, you know, make their first video, giving their testimony, which I think is the, the, the best thing for you to do, is giving their testimony. Some of them are camera shy, stumble over the words a little bit, but that doesn't matter. If the Lord can help, let's, let's remember something right quick. Moses had a stuttering problem. He couldn't put his words together. He, his speech was impaired. But the Lord made a way for him to be able to relay his message to Pharaoh so that he may let his people go. If God can do that for Moses, he can do that for all of us. The same goes with the Apostle Paul, admitting that he was a nervous person. Didn't really do too well in front of crowds, but the Lord worked in his heart. And if he can do that for him, surely he can do that for anybody who asks. The book of James tells us, whosoever shall ask the Lord for wisdom, he will give it freely to whom ask it but let no one ask the Lord for anything if you don't have any faith you can't be double minded many of you want there want to share your stories share how you came to the Lord and I say you need to because somebody out there is waiting for you Someone's waiting for you to speak. You may think that you're insufficient. You may think that you don't matter. You may think that you can't be effective. But if you are saved by the blood of Christ, you have purpose. And the Lord has something that he wants to do in your life. But it's up to you to answer the call. It's up to you to decide that you want to put your will aside and do your father's business. It's up to you. And once you make that personal choice, God will work in your life. Because he, he, he wants you. And many people out here need you. I'm talking to you. Whoever's watching this video, God's talking loud and clear. But who's listening? He wants you. We all got work to do. We got work to do, folks. We have to spread the gospel, bring as many people to Jesus as we possibly can. Remember the work that you do on this earth 
acquires you riches in heaven. I made a video called The Crowns of Life. Please go check it out. And it'll tell you about all of the rewards that you shall reap for your labor here on earth. But we don't just do it for that. We do it because we want to see people saved. We do it because we don't want to see people go to hell. We don't want to see people in eternal damnation. We don't want to see people walking astray down the path of darkness, especially if we know what the truth is. We don't want to see that. I don't want to see that, which is why I constantly do this. I make these videos inspired by the Lord in hopes that I reach at least one person. At least one person. There is no personal gain. The glory goes to God Almighty through His Son, Jesus Christ. Shall He be glorified through this vessel? Time is short. Please, let's not deny the gifts that the Lord has bestowed on our life. Whether you accept it or not, or whether you realize it or not, he has gifted us. He has given us something that we need to share with the whole world. But we have to be willing to let him, let him do it. Let him do a work in our life. This is the time where the Lord is assembling the body of Christ. The true saints. The revival of individuals in different nations are going to be taking place. And God is going to use some people who people didn't think stood a chance. And he's going to remove some people who had their chance. God bless you all. Let's get busy for Christ. We don't have a lot of time left. We don't. Please like this video. If you're new, consider subscribing, comment, share. God bless.